Well, there's a new stealth model that appeared on Open Router. It's called Sonoma Sky Alpha. Here's what you need to know. Number one, it's a 2 million context window model. The biggest one yet out of all the Frontier Labs. So Google Gemini 2.5 Pro was 1 million. And GPT 4.1 had 1 million within some deploy, within some special use cases. There's some other ones that are bigger, but they're prototypes that are not one of the models that we've heard of. For reference, GPT-5 is 256,000, but this, this one is a 2 million, and it does very well on the extended NYT connections benchmark, apparently. It's also apparently really good at diplomacy. So this is Alex Duffy from at Every. They, of course, have that diplomacy where they get all the LLMs playing the game diplomacy to see which one is the best. Apparently, this one is really good. It's the highest baseline diplomacy performance, highly steerable. So it's a bit hard to see here, but on the left, we have O3 aggressive, then Sonoma Sky aggressive, then Sonoma Sky. You know, a little bit down the line, we have GPT-5 minimal aggressive. We have Gemini 2.5 flash aggressive. But the point being is out of the box, this thing is very good. It's it's the highest, as I say, the highest baseline setting. So without tuning it to be more aggressive, less aggressive. This is the highest out of all the other models from, from their baseline. It's really good at lying to your face right out of the box. I'm just kidding. Diplomacy is not just about being able to lie. It's a lot more than that, but definitely there's some deceptive elements and also expecting when others might betray you. Overall, pretty good benchmark. And uh, this model performs incredibly well from the get-go. Jacob Matson is saying they took this model out for a spin at TLDR. Sonoma Sky is extremely good. It's very accurate. It uses very few tokens and it's fast. And many, many people that have tried it are extremely impressed with it. This web app was generated in 48 seconds, a DNA sequence analyzer. Scores a subjective 10 out of 10 as a coding tutor. Response is long, comprehensive, well-grounded, doesn't waste my time. Excellent. Another person's own kind of benchmark saying that it beats out GPT-5 by a slim 2-3%. Now there's two variants. We have Sonoma Sky Alpha, sort of the main, sounds like the big model, and we have Dusk. It sounds like it's the smaller model, maybe much faster. And they're saying that delivering a massive 2 million token context window, the biggest yet, without sacrificing speed or performance, isn't a small feat. So again, it's just as fast. Sounds like it's it's very good, better than some of the best models available right now. Who could this be? Is this a Gemini 3? By all accounts, as far as we can tell, it's Hex AI. It's Grok. Here's Pliny the Liberator Grok 4.20 confirmed. Sonoma is Grok. Grok is Sonoma. Now, by the way, this isn't just from this one response by Sonoma. There's a number of little t telltale signs from Pliny as well as other people that seem to confirm that this is indeed Grok. I'll show you why in a second, but as Pliny puts here, this output merely confirmed my main forensic investigation, Unicode literacy. Grok is the only LM from a major lab that can read invisible Unicode like this without long reasoning. And it turns out the Sonoma models handle it with the exact same ease as Grok. As you'll see below, state-of-the-art models like GPT-5 and Opus 4.1 can't even see the prompt. Now, there's a way to tell which model is which based on kind of like the diversity of words and sentences and various structures that they used, the various styles that they used. So, for example, for this benchmark, 400 stories per LM were analyzed for stylistic fingerprints and story diversity. You see how models write, how their outputs differ, right? So, GPT-5 is the winner. But running this analysis to check writing diversity across models makes it 100% obvious that the stealth 2 million context window model, Sonoma Sky Alpha, what that model is. Will it be named a 4.1 or 5? That's your hint. So this is basically saying it can be anthropic because they have a 4.1. It's not a Gemini because they haven't released a Gemini 3 yet. It's not GPT because they have a 4.1 and a 5. The only one it could be is XAI. But as somebody mentions below, no 4.2 option. Basically, that's what I believe Elon said was the next version that's coming, 4.2. Now, the interesting thing about XAI and Grok is that if you take a look at the world's most powerful compute clusters located all around the world, one of them is much bigger than the others. And that is the XAI Colossus Memphis Phase 2. So they started with Phase 1 with 100,000. H100 equivalents, right? 
and now at 200,000 each 100 equivalent. So that's the GPU chips from NVIDIA. By the way, that's not counting uh, the Tesla, what Tesla has. This is just XAI. That's what's being used to train these models. And all that power is going to train these models. And it sounds like a lot of it is focusing on the reasoning, reinforcement learning aspect of it. So we're throwing that RL compute towards its ability to reason, to solve problems to develop its own cognitive strategies to solve those problems. And that's why it's going to be so important to see kind of the next stage of evolution for Grok. Now, recently, XAI released Grok Code Fast 1. That one appeared in the sort of the stealth model training as Sonic, I believe. Shortly after Sonic appeared here and there, Grok Code Fast 1 was released and quickly dominates with a 52.1% coding traffic share on open router surpassing the total of all other code generators combined with the highest ever record usage. So this was as of September 1st, 2025. So as you can see here, that's a quite a feat. Juliang tested Grok Code Fast 1 on his coding eval set, and he's saying the performance is very strong, which is surprising considering its likely small size. It's very, very fast. So as you can see here, I mean, we do have Claude Opus 4 at the top, Claude Sonnet, Grok 4 is up there, but all of these are very large models, very expensive models. Grok Code Fast 1 is super fast, super cheap. So thanks to Zhu Liang for putting this together. He also has a blog post where he puts together basically talks about how the evaluation was made, but here's a great comparison of all the different models and their cost. So you'll see here GPT 4.1 has an input price of two per million tokens, output price of $8 per 1 million tokens. Gemini 2.5 Pro is a little bit less in input, a little bit more in output, but Grok Code Fast 1 is 20 cents per million tokens in input and a dollar fifty for the output per million tokens. So one tenth of the cost of Gemini 2.5 Pro, even if you compare it to Gemini 2.5 Flash, it's still cheaper. Gemini 2.5 Flash, the input price is 30 cents, the output is 250. So a very solid, cheap, and good model that apparently everyone on Open Router is loving. So it's going to be very interesting to see when Grok 4.2, we assume that's what it's going to be called, 4.2, that might change, but that's what it seems like it's going to be called. It's going to be very interesting to see what that looks like. How good is it going to be? I mean, we kind of have a taste of it with these early previews. Now, Denny Lamanceta builds a lot of games using the various Grok models. Recently, he used the new Sonic Grok Code Fast One model to build this thing. It's pretty cool. I mean, it's looking good. It's looking like a good mobile game, something you can find in the App Store. I'm going to say it's, it's impressive. Here's a chart of the various models and their tokens per second versus output price. Basically, it's fast and it's cheap. So the big point of this model is going to be tackling common coding tasks quickly and cost effectively. It's likely that we're not going to just use one model to do a lot of the coding. There's going to be things where we needed to be very accurate and think about it. But there's a lot of uh, super simple stuff that just needs to get done. And uh, certain models like this will shine at that. It's going to be fast, cheap, and accurate. Maybe you're not going to use it for your most complicated tasks, but it's going to be a hard worker that's doing just a lot of outputs very inexpensively. By the way, on my other channel, the West and Dylan podcast, we just interviewed Denny Lemoncetta's partner, who is also building games that are being released. And some of them are in the App Store right now, I believe. Those games are made with AI models, so like Grok. Neither of them are developers, so they don't code it themselves. They've been using these models to create these games. We have a full interview that's hopefully going to be live by the time you watch this. So check it out. I'll put it in the show notes. And let me know what you think about this. Are you excited about the new iteration of Grok? Have you had a chance to try out the fast one, Grok code fast one? I just, I just want to call it Sonic. It's so much easier. But let me know what you think about this. Do you think XAI is going to start snowballing pretty hard here? Because remember, it wasn't even on the charts not that long ago. Now it's roaring to the top. Let me know what you think if you made it this far. My name is Wes Rob. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.